Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Air Holler with me, Heard 37 So we are done with the 747s and uh, man, there was a crappy landing last time and it kind of sucks because I wanted to do a, finally a good landing with the 40, 747 I didn't. But it's time to move on over to the 777s. I, I guess I should be doing the FedEx instead of the TNT livery, but uh, that's alright. I've already got this thing loaded up in the flight plan and everything. It's actually a really short flight. Uh, that's why I picked it. But it's only 331 miles, but I mean, look, it pays 715 grand. Uh, can't, can't do much better than that, really. And uh, by the way, we're going to do several videos on each seven, uh, each triple seven. Uh, I don't, because I've only got two of them, so I don't want to just like do one with each. So we'll do several of each of them. Uh, everybody loves the triple seven. I like flying it as well. A little weird to get used to, but uh, actually a very, very fun plane. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this one going. Like I said, I've already got the flight plan, which was easy. It's actually just a SID and a STAR because it's so close. All right, uh, I had to take out a bunch of fuel. It actually cost me like 24, 25 grand to offload all that fuel. Uh, it, had, it had like 300 and some thousand miles range. Uh, so I took it off to just basically double, a little over double. Is that really all it can go? 4,800? I don't really believe that. All right, well, anyway. Yes, it is fragile, so we'll try not to screw that up. I don't know if there's any heavies, because the 777 is considered a heavy. Could just go over to the cargo area. Might have to do that. Series of large for general aviation... Aviation large. We'll probably just go over to cargo. Uh, hopefully these will be big enough. Some some of these like in between buildings and stuff. So hopefully this works out. Is that the first cargo? Yes, yeah, the first one upside the fuel. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and move on over to the plane. All right, everybody, here we are on the plane. It's raining in Indy. There she is. If you don't remember it, beautiful plane. Beautiful. Let's see down here. Let's see if this thing has got the right fuel and payload. Uh, fuel should be 57, 284. 57, 284. Shoot, that's in kilograms. It's supposed to be in pounds. Let me check something. It's probably going to be. All right, be right back. All right, I got it changed now. Uh, so it looked like it might have actually... No, it didn't, but uh, fuel is 57,284. So it put a little extra in, but that's not so bad. So I'll leave that. Change that. Let's check our payload. 40, so 102, 268. So that actually looks pretty good. So looks like everything's good there. All right, reference airport. We're Indianapolis, K I N D. Uh, do not know the gate, so we'll just skip that. Uh, we're going K I N D to Memphis, which is M E M. Company route, not in database. Well, that's not good. K I N D. Oh, that's. K M E M. Whoops, there we go. Uh, well, I won't do the runway just yet. Activate, execute. Let's go over to departures and arrivals. We're taking off on runway 23 right. The SID is OOM3. Transition at PXV. I thought we had executed that, but maybe not. Let's check this out. Didn't come up. 23 right, OOM3, PXV. Why is there no execute or anything? Damn it. It's acting like it's. I don't know how that got there. 
kind of changed on me. That was kind of weird. Um, there's the runaway. So today's actually coming up. It's kind of weird how uh, that didn't act right. Uh, we're landing on 18 left. And the star is WLD ER8. Transition at PXV. That is weird how it's not asking me to do anything. You can see it's there. Um, there's vectors again. So move that up. Take out those vectors. All right. Activate. Activate. Execute. All right. Carry zero. Q weight. Uh, reserve. Carry five. Perfect. And it will do request. It's actually. It's going to come up. I believe eighty-five. That's what I've got set at uh, in the FMC. Uh, cruise altitude. I'm not sure it, it's it's so short. See, we're not going to up to 380,000 or 300. Well, we're obviously not going to that. 38,000. That's just too high uh, for such a short flight. So I'm actually going to put 20,000 feet, and I hope that that gets in there. All right, we won't do a derated takeoff. Uh, flaps, I believe, is 15. And we'll go 15 flaps. Alright, trim is 2.5. Not much trim at all, but we are very light. So we'll move this to 2.5 right there. A little more, there we go. All right, let's go over to the approach speed. Let's check out the legs. Let's see if we actually do get up. To see, that's got 38,000 feet. Or I just don't think it's necessary to even go that high. I'm not sure how we can get up to 38,000 feet. Well, I guess that's 70 some miles. I mean, I guess we could go to 38,000. I noticed, I did a flight in this the other day, and I noticed it doesn't really like to pay attention to a lot of the stuff I put in anyway. Okay, so it is, it's still listed at 38,000 feet, so we'll just go with that. Let's check out the speed, though. 170, see, that's one of the things, 170, but we'll, what's the actual speed? Yeah, 137, so I don't know why that doesn't change. It doesn't like my speeds really. It's so 137. It'll actually probably be less when we actually get there. 137, uh, five miles before that, 170. I'll go 165. We got six miles before that. That should be, let's say 205. This thing does not slow down very quick either. I've noticed that as well. Very slippery through the air. All right. So like I said, we're taking off on 23 right. I'm guessing that's over there. Maybe we should have taken 23 left, huh? That actually might be a little short. All right. Got the air with the fuel pumps. We turn those off. Beacon and nav need to be on. Everything other than that is set. Not sure of the exact heading of the runway. So I'll put it two three zero. Oops. That's not what I wanted. This is two three zero. Was our speed I was messing with? What is our speed anyway? 150. 150. 
and this is 38,000. Just seems awfully high for such a short flight. We'll see if we actually get there. I'm guessing we do. Flight directors, I'll turn those on. Arm LNAV and VNAV. Breaks an RTO. Alright, let's go ahead and get our pushback. Our tail goes to the right. Go ahead and turn TCAS on. Oh, TCAS is on. That's kind of weird. I've never seen it turn itself on before. The traffic, let's see if we see anything. No. That's surprising. Indianapolis is uh, actually a fairly busy uh, airport, especially with cargo. There's a lot of uh, FedEx points there. I used to go by it all the time out on the highway. There's always a ton of FedEx points there. But I love this plane. I actually just did a flight, um, did a video for it, finished it yesterday. It was uh, San Francisco to Hong Kong, the new Hong Kong, not the Kai Tech. You want to check that out, but by the time this gets up, uh, uploaded, I think I've got like five or videos, air hauler videos before this one, so it'll actually be quite a while ago that I've actually done it by the time you see this. Because uh, when I when I fly and I, I've got time to fly and I, I just, if everything's going good, I just make, keep on making videos because uh, I enjoy it so much. So I end up with a lot of videos that's, I think, better than uh, realizing I don't have any videos and I need to, need to have some. Alright, it wasn't going to take us to the yellow line, so I just go ahead and stop it. And, uh, taxi light. Kind of interested in our frame rate. 22? Kind of surprised by that. That's not a whole lot better than when I was in San Francisco, which is not the easiest scenery to run. It's old as well. Alright, so 23 rides to be on the other side of the airport. And it sucks. Oh well. So this is something I hate about Easy Dock right now. It's been really bad. It's how much it already moves the views uh, by just turning and stuff. I wish there was a way to turn that off. So it just kind of stays centered. It's really annoying every time I turn to have that thing moving around. Such a powerful plane, you can feel it even taxing, just raising the throttle up a little bit. It really can get this thing moving. I really do love this plane. I thought it was really odd uh, beginning to, I remember when I first started flying, it was really odd. Due to the fly-by-wire, I guess. Just, I, I don't know. I kept on having a problem staying in the air uh, when I came to land. It seemed like I was always getting slow. I don't know. Maybe my skills have improved a little bit since then, too. Not that they're all that great. But I guess you get used to it as well. I don't know exactly. You could cross the runway there. If not, you might have to go over to the runway here. So I think it's, we'll just go ahead and turn here. I think there is actually a taxiway in front of it. Because I don't want to taxi down the runway, but I think there's a taxiway before it. That way we don't have to cross the uh, 23 left. Love the library. It seems uh almost looks like the plane is shorter than I remember. I was doing the 300 ER uh, the other day in that video. Uh, I can't remember exactly which plane this is. I'm thinking it's the 200 LR. I'm not for sure. Uh, actually, be the LRF because this is a freight freighter. Alright, hopefully we can get to the runway from here. There's everybody else. There's some planes. Got it at full. 
uh, the traffic so I do well I think I do I have it turned on a little bit I guess the cargo location would be uh, where FedEx is actually or we just were Air train plane. Uh, I think the south, yeah, the Southwest American Delta. I flew Southwest out of there a couple times. This one of their bigger hubs. I'm not for sure, but I think so. Flew there to Baltimore and uh, back, and I flew there to Atlanta back, right, Indianapolis. Really haven't flown all that much in my life, but. Fly out of there. Remember, going to Baltimore is in the early damn morning. It was for work. Go to a training session. And I wanted to puke so bad, and my buddy was with me and kept laughing because he thought it was absolutely hilarious. Because I'm. As much as I love flying, I do not like flying in real life. Deathly scared of flying. So he's probably going to go up and fly the exact opposite way. Who knows who's right? Flight some commander or actual weather? Probably the actual weather. Flight some commander. It's great for so many things, but I've realized when it comes to weather, it kind of sucks. Because it is wrong so many times. Does our runway start over here? By this it basically starts right where we are. I do not see it. That's a taxiway. Is it way over here? Where are you? 23 right. I don't know. No, that's uh, coming in. Where the hell is 23 right? right there all right maybe that guy was going to 23 right maybe I'm just going a crappy way all right see there goes my view going over to the right I uh, took that turn a little wide as well Go ahead and get my flaps 15. I think 15 is right. I can't remember if it's 5 that you normally take off or 15 in this plane. I guess I could look at some of my older videos. Figure that out. Alright, turn right here. Alpha. I wonder if that air, where that air train plane is, did it go to the other end? Or was it going to this? I don't know that, is there another way to get to 23? Right? Now yeah, there's a taxiway over there. Approaching, two, three, right. All right. Landing lights go on, strobe goes on. Go ahead and move on to the runway. I don't see air train anywhere. Approaching two, three, right. Already said that lady. slow on the turn there. Is that air train at the end of this runway? On runway, two, three, right. See, I can't get lined up with my view switching over on me. I think air train is on the runway. Let's my parking brake real quick. Maybe 
Maybe I'm wrong. It really looks like there's something there, though. Alright. I'm hoping that's him. I thought for sure something was moving. Alright, we'll go ahead and go. Wait, that's not what I wanted. Oh. Uh... Oh, dear lord, I've already screwed it up. There we go. Toga. That's what I meant to hit, not autopilot. Nothing at the end of the runway. That's good. All right, pause the rate gear up. We need to slow this thing down. Dear Lord, we're so light. We get flaps to one already. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the autopilot. I cannot keep this thing under 250. By the way, it seems, seems to want to go up to 260. Uh, under 10,000 feet. I think someone else, I've seen other people with the same problem. Uh, the, who are actually right on that. See? It's at 25,000 or 20,000 or whatever. So we were right with the weather. Yay. I, I'm not the one that's actually wrong with it. Some flight some coming here that's always wrong with it. Flaps are already up, but we've slowed back down. We are alright. It's this thing just accelerated like crazy. There's huge engines. I'm surprised that it's still at 23, 24 down to 19. Could be due to weather as well. Especially clouds seem to bring it down. Everything seems pretty smooth. Take a look outside. I believe. Uh, it's very dense and dense for the same complexity. Not a I do really like that view. It's got massive engines. Alright, coming up on 10,000 feet. Landing lights come off. Man, she's just rocking up. We're 3,500 feet a minute right now. She'll make it to 38,000 in no time, I guess. 10,000 feet in, what, a minute? <laughs> Maybe? It's insane. I like how this thing does its time compression. You can set the auto compression, uh, have it do 4x, 8x, or whatever, and uh, set up so you can just right click the chronometer. It'll automatically do that. I think the plane handles a little bit better when you do it that way instead of going up to your options. It could be the same, but I thought they did something where uh, using the plane to do it, uh, it handled better. Alright, but well with that said, I'm going to go ahead and do that and speed it up and be back in just a bit.
All right, everybody, I'm back. We're coming up on 7,500 feet. All right, so let's check our landing speed now. All right, so it's still 137. I'll see it, it's moved this back to 170 again. I don't understand why it does that. 137, I'd rather that be like 150. Now if it's in eight miles, we're not gonna slow down that much. Move that to 180 if I can. All right. And the runway heading, I'm going to go ahead and move that to 280. 180. Actually, I was like, it's going away from the runway. 180. Right, coming up on 6900 feet. Speed brake is armed. Auto brakes are set at 2. Landing lights and taxi light are both on. into Memphis. There it is. Let's see. If I, yeah, I can't see it. We need to be at 180. Like I said, I just struggle with this thing getting it to slow down, going, getting at the speed that I really want it to be at. Notice that. Like I just showed, it, it changes the landing speed. I have no idea why. could speed it up a little bit. I'm kind of afraid to. It's right at 30 frames a second now. Let me go ahead and put the flaps to one so that when it wants to, it can start slowing down. Right on the glide slope. It's been on the glide slope for the most part. I know when I was flying it yesterday, I had to keep uh, getting off the vertical speed and uh, choosing it myself to get it on the glide slope. But today it's worked pretty well. I couldn't get it to auto go to 4x because I guess all the parameters hadn't been met, so I did it manually just through options. I tried a couple times, but I think one time it was ascending, the other was descending today, so maybe that was one reason why it didn't want to work. Didn't try it while uh, we were in level flight. Beautiful autumn. Um, there's a little lighting strip. Six hundred feet. And it's got eleven miles until it wants to be at one eighty. There it just dropped. Let's see if it can actually slow itself down. I have to use the speed brake a lot of notice in this plane. See it's slowly coming down. I'm gonna go and it'll need to be on flaps five when it's there, so I'll go ahead and do flaps five. Oh, huh. Hope it drag a little bit. It's slowly going down. It's got nine miles to get there. It slowed down below uh, 250 by the time it got down to 10,000 as well. I was happy to see that. So yeah, now we're down to 22. Hopefully, it's just not jagged when we get there. I think with this plane and the density that everything's at, plus all the weather, all these clouds. Because uh, I've got the weather turned up, uh, the cloud density and everything. I think it just, it's all a little too much. Probably everybody knows that prepared version 3 is out. I'm really looking at buying that. Maybe the Pro version or something. That just seems like a, it's so much improved and people are now uh, making installers for it for all the aircraft and different scenery and everything. I'm really taking a look at uh, messing with that. I'll also stick with FSX though. I know everyone likes those videos, I think, more because that's what most people have over prepared. Alright, this looks like it's gonna get to that speed. I'm kind of surprised because, like I said, I've been having problems with that in my other flight. down to 4,200 feet. I couldn't tell if that was the airport or not. I think it's going to be further away. 
Could be it over there, I guess. And one thing that's kind of interesting about this plane is uh, you leave the auto throttles on when you land. It's kind of like the Airbuses, the A320 and 321. I've never liked that very much, but because uh, I like to have control, but it seemed to work out uh, pretty well on my other flight. I, I struggle with the Airbus. I've tried different landings with the Airbus, just messing around, and I swear to God, I cannot land that plane. It always comes in too quick and I bounce it. I just, I can't believe it. I'm not that good with the 737 either. I've been doing some landings with it. It's a little bit better than the Airbus for me, but I just, I don't know. So we're gonna be down to 150. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put, clutch the 15. I'm not sure how well it's gonna be that slowing down to that. See the runway there, we're maybe 12, 13 miles away from it. Here's the downtown area. That's another reason why the frame rate will drop, although it's pretty smooth. And the smoothness is more important than the actual frame rate. In all actuality, so let's go ahead and hit the localizer. We need to get down, we're a little bit above the glide slope. Approach hold. Going flaps is 20. Just the furthest you can go before you gotta extend the gear. Still a little above the glide slope. You know who I hit put the gear out. Hopefully that'll help it slow down. We got it. Remember, uh, B ref is 137. Flaps at 25. 2500. See? Not, oh, alright, the gear is actually on its way down. That's why. No, why are the engines spoiling up? We don't want. Three miles, we got to be at 150. So why would you be splitting up now? So we're actually eight miles away from the runway. Then it'll say drag required. Yeah, it's because you were dicking around. The intelligence, intelligence of a human being. Average you. Full flaps. Frame rate is dropping big stump 15. Real. Alright, so it's going to stop at 150, but I, I'm wondering if it'll be able to get down to 137. I did all that a little early, but it's because uh, I'm worried about the speed. Alright, so I'm not sure if it's actually 137 or 142. I can't remember. I've seen other people do it differently. Some put it right at the V-Ref in this plane. Some put it at the 5 over. I'm not sure if this includes the 5 over or not. I don't think so. I think it's technically supposed to be 142. You want to leave a comment about that. Although, by the time you leave your comment, I will have done other videos. So it may not show up like that. Alright, it is slowed down nicely now. Frame range jumping back up. You know what? 18 center is much longer. 18 right looks longer as well. I hope we didn't pick a very One small pound. runway. I think we did. I think I didn't realize there was a center. I would have picked the center had I realized that. I think we were on a really short runway. Uh, 137 we should be able to stop just fine as long as I don't float it all right 
autopilot's off. Approaching one eight left. Sorry if I'm quiet, just gotta concentrate a little. Slightly low, although I prefer that over being high. For some reason at the very end I'm always I always end up a little high. Like right now, we were about to go. Slightly to the right. Being a little too low. One hundred. Off to the left. I can't help that now. It's a little late for that. 50, 30, 20, 10. See, she floated a little bit, but not too bad. I think had I, uh, we were 80 knots. I think had I aimed it a little shorter, we would have probably been alright. By the way, it was a greaser, as you saw, and we had fragile cargo, so that's another problem. But, uh, it felt good. Like I said, we went a little long, but, uh, I aimed it a little long. We were coming in a little long, is what I should say. All right, I think we're off the runway. No, oh, so I was thinking that seemed a little short. <laughs> Let me pull up a little bit. I went up ATC as well. This will place the part. Hopefully, we we'll have to go to the gate. I just clicked the wrong button. Well, I clicked the right button. Hold on a second. That key is turn the landing lights off. Strobe also comes off. Taxi stays on. Turn on the progressive taxi. Go up here. My uh, command for ending the recording and the PMG plane is connected also to the. Uh, Auto throttles, that's why that happened. Alright. It works on all the other planes, so I just keep it though. To get that auto brake turned off, flight directors as well. Get that here in a second. It's a tight turn. So my view goes sliding to the left. I swear, I really, I swear to God, I hate that. Slow down a little bit. Flight director off. Flight director off. Flaps are fully retracted. Auto brake is off. Getting fast. Go back in the idle. But a fairly good landing. Uh, like I said, a little long, but I was coming in a little far on that. It's weird how we, uh, the glide slope seems to dip right at the end on me. I'm never really prepared for that. It's another reason I should come in a little bit lower than the uh, light slope. Although I we had no Pappy lights or anything, so I was using uh, for display flight director. I think it's fine to be a little low, but hey, it's a much better landing than what we've been doing the 747. I don't know why. <laughs> I think one reason with the 747 is uh, I think I need to do a better job of staying on the glide slope. Or, like I said, just below it. I think I get too high, and then when I come down, uh, I get that speed picking up and uh, just slam down on the ground a little hard. It's like the gate's over to the right of us. I see some activity over there. There's a UPS plant. I don't know if that's us or not. 
Prob well, no, that's right. We flew here not too long ago, and that UPS plane was sitting over there. We parked over by it, actually. I can't remember that. I don't know why it's still here. It was weeks ago. <laughs> that's a cargo area. We could actually just go over there and park there. Well, there's somebody else there. With them. Keeping them company. So we'll just keep on going. I'll put my hand back on this yoke. Tell you, it feels much better after a good landing. <laughs> I dwell on the bad ones. It just really annoys me, especially with the 747, because I love that plane. I fly it so much. And I get in a rut of uh, just having some bad landings. It really gets frustrating. Like I was saying, the, I, the Airbus is the worst for me. The A321, anything from the A318, A320, whatever. All of them. I really struggle with that landing, especially with that daggone uh, auto throttle. Looks like I always come in too hot. All right. Approaching Start to get slowed a little bit. Get over to the left a lot. Right, we'll step right here and give her a look. Nothing over there, nothing over there. It's a short runway. Approaching zero nine. I was really afraid we were going to end up on a really short runway when I saw that when we were coming in. Because I remembered uh, last time we landed here, there is a center runway here at Memphis. I was thinking it was just left and right when I was looking at the runways. I didn't realize there was center again. short on that turn. They didn't take us up for to a terminal now, did they? No thanks. Oh, good lord. That's the other traffic, stupid van. Don't worry me, there's no planes running around here, buddy. Just do what you want to do. Alright. Let's see if we can pull in. I think this is the one they said. It took off the progressive taxi a little early. Got a little wide. Go back around. I think I turned that one up. Ah, well, yeah, we're a little cockeyed. Yeah, it took it a little long to get it straightened up. Heart brake is off. Taxi light is off. We'll go ahead and just cut the fuel. Get these off. Where is the battery? I thought I need to turn it off. Obviously, in this one, I don't really worry too much about turning it off correctly. There it is. All right, let's go over to air hauler and get paid. All right. Go ahead and unload. Made some really good money. Was it 715 grand minus the fuel? In fact, it cost me 24 grand to dump the other fuel. But so we'll pick up over 600, well over 600 grand for this flight. This job. Very nice. I like, I like getting paid like that. 
the other good thing about this job is it ended up in Memphis, and we have a, a base there. So that's always good. Thank you, Air Holler, for finally closing. By the way, I did not put in for um, Air Holler 2 beta tester. I kind of think I sh probably should have. But I ended up thinking about it and it got too late and I apps didn't put in. I tried to tell you all. I don't know if you probably didn't hear it in time, but they did uh, ask for beta testers for Air Holler 2. I don't know if they would have picked me. I'm not, I'm not the greatest pilot in the world, but I do seem to fly a ton. Oh, I mean, I wish I was other Richmond. Another Richmond, 300 miles, 300 grand. K Rick, I think, is the other Richmond. Would have paid very well. Could do that. It's about twice as long. It actually pays something. All these other ones uh, don't seem to pay that much. And I just started up Air Hauler for the first time in a little bit, so it's not going to regenerate jobs tomorrow or later today. So those are probably the ones I'd be stuck with. We do have our plane in Bozeman. Uh, since we have a base there at uh, Memphis, I could always just leave it there and hop over to this one real quick. There's a really short one to Denver that pays great. Sarasota Bradenton. It's a long flight, but man, it pays really good. I wish we had, if we could go to Denver. I wonder if there's anything from Denver going back to Bozeman. Because it, it is, see how it's uh, not a solid line. That means there's either two going down or one coming back. That would be crazy to go to Denver and back to Bozeman and then pick up that one going down to uh, Sarasota. Was it Sarasota or Bradenton? Of course, there's a $1 million flight out of Denver we could always pick up. Uh, there is one going back to Bozeman. It doesn't pay very much, but it, it's enough to maybe to pay for the fuel. But that daggone Denver to Los Angeles is interesting because, I mean, it pays so daggone much. I don't have any scenery for there. I wonder if there's anything from L.A. back to Bozeman. I doubt it. Wichita, Indy, Bloomington, is that a big airport? 8,000 feet. Yeah, I'll see anything to Bozeman. I'll have to give that a thought. I could always have either flight back on my own back to Bozeman or something. Because that lost to Los Angeles is a million dollars. I mean, that's a really, really well playing well-paying flight. So I'll have to give some thought about that. But uh, this was a good flight. We're into this uh, 777s now. I think after that we'll go over to the Dash 8, I think. I also want to fly the 757. I really am loving that plane. But that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. I hope you did enjoy it, and I will catch you on the next flight.